Well, welcome back to uh, Along the Road here in Kingston, New Hampshire. I'm Pastor Josh at First Congregational Church. And I'm Katie Johnson, the Children's uh, Discipleship Director here at Kingston Congregational Church. Yes, and we are entering or in the middle of our Advent season. Uh, last week we talked about the first two parts of the way we're doing Advent. We're talking about uh, prophecy and promise, or I think it's the other way around in, in the order we have it in. And uh, this week we'll be talking more about the other two parts that we're focusing on this year, joy and adoration. And so we, we're talking about seasonal traditions and Advent tradition, what we learn about Advent, uh, especially I didn't have it growing up and, and what it means now. And, and this I, I think the stability that we have within having at least a focus structure, mm-hmm. um, the church calendar gives us a little bit of that. You know, we enter a time of Epiphany and then the time of Lent and the time of Easter. And it just helps us walk through different things so we can focus not just on scripture but we can focus on what god has for us and teaching us themes very and and i think the themes are are important Mm -hmm. um i do like that the themes don't have to be exactly the way they are this is why we're doing slightly different ones this year they don't have to be identical correct though i've always done joy on the third week it's one of those traditional things that you're supposed to do joy on the third week that if you light the candles the third candle is always the pink candle The other three are purple candles, and I'm sure maybe someone can comment as to why they're purple and pink. Um, We pulled Pastor Thomas up here. He'd probably tell us. He actually tells us which ones to light in which order. There's an order in the way that you go around the the candelabra lighting the candles, and I just light whichever one's there. I light whichever purple one, the next purple one, and then I always do pink because the third week has just always been pink. So I'm toying with the idea of one of these years doing pink first really throwing people off. Not that you're a rebel or anything. Not that I'm a rebel or anything. <laughs> uh, but why not start with joy? You know, and it doesn't even have to be joy, but it seems like, it does seem like you do have to have joy mixed into Christmas time. They do seem to go hand in hand. They do. If you Or some type of joy theme, maybe use a different word, but, but joy fills a lot. You can't say happy. Uh, happy is too fleeting. Right. Um, joy is different. Mm-hmm. And it is something that is spoken of throughout all of Scripture uh, that, that we can have in, in the Psalms and in the writings. They talk about the delight or the joy that's in their heart from the Word of God. And what amazes me sometimes is some of these people writing are not in what we would call happy situations. And so the theme of joy at Christmas is not about a happy situation. Uh, I think it's it's something much deeper. It's about understanding that God rescues us when we don't deserve it. Mm-hmm. And so joy is is a response to that rescuing, uh, a response to him leaving his throne, a response to the great price that he pays in order to, to bring us back and to have a relationship with us. Um, so I, I think it changes the aspect of that as, as opposed to most people might just think it's when I get the next job, or when I got the A on the test. And those are joy. Well, they're happy. Mm-hmm. But joy is, is different than, than people talk about joy even in, in suffering. Um, so how would you define the difference between joy and happiness? I think in the definition, I would, I would call happiness uh, momentary emotions, mm-hmm. uh, fleeting emotions, uh, kind of like a, a spike in things. Mm-hmm. Um, and joy is something that is not grounded in emotion. It's grounded in, in a fact that that is altered life. Mm-hmm. And so it, it's actually a change in perception. And so the definition is, is that change in perception. I can still have happy moments. Mm-hmm. But happiness at a birthday party, happiness opening the right gift, uh, that doesn't change my perception in life. Happiness coming home with a new flavor of coffee happiness coming home with the new flavor of coffee uh yeah that doesn't change my perception of life i might really enjoy it mm-hmm. uh and i do uh, but it doesn't change that how doesn't i look at joy. things joy yeah. changes how you look at things and joy is, is less based on you happiness is this feeling that that's on me i'm happy i opened a gift i'm happy this mm-hmm. But we know those things can go away. A gift can fall apart. Coffee will be gone at some point. Yeah. You know, the the competition you won, you have to get ready to the next one. You know, there's all different ways, and they 
They don't sustain. I think of happiness as being external. Okay, yeah. And joy as being internal. Mm, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. And on the inside, it's hard, harder to squash that, mm-hmm. put that away. Things on the outside do kind of come and go. Yes. Um, that's, I think that's why I, I mentioned like it's more emotional than happiness. Yeah. The, the internal part is, is joy is a decision. You know, I've decided what Christ has done. I've decided this. And because of that, that's why I say it changes perception. It changes the way I even look at my suffering mm-hmm. or the loss of a job or the loss of X, Y, Z, whatever it is. Um, it changes the way I look at that. Was it Paul who said, I count it all joy? Mm-hmm. He, Paul is the one that said that, that he can, he has found contentment mm-hmm. in having plenty and in having nothing. He, he was able to, if you remember in part of the, the book of Acts, while in prison, after being beaten up and in chains, they're singing hymns to, to the Lord. Philippians. Yeah. Philippi. And Philippi in the book of Acts, they do that. And the yeah. Philippian jailer, the earthquake comes yeah. and the Philippian jailer releases them. But they, they're not understanding the joy that these people have. Because this life is now, it, it's it's almost like you said, like that happiness. It's external. This life is 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 not the end of it. And it's not just that I'm thinking I may be rescued. I have this solid knowledge that my rescuing has already happened. And, and I'm not wondering, am I saved? Am I in this? Like, there, there is this assurance in that. And, and so they can be in the middle of prison, beaten up, full of joy. And, um, and you hear of that in other situations where Christians are being persecuted, mm-hmm. that it, it will affect their captors. It could help rescue their captors in the sense of they become believers mm-hmm. uh, because they don't understand the joy that they have. You can't break that spirit because what they're trying to do is break the outside like mm-hmm. you would say and joy is much deeper to that it also has eternal perspective mm-hmm. that's you know, right eternal perspective in the sense that well christ has rescued but also when he returns this is the second advent there is this eternal glory in his kingdom and all of the pain is gone and all of these uh, troubles are gone all of my inadequacies are gone and they're replaced uh, with newness. And and so that eternal perspective gives me a, a different look on today's suffering, mm-hmm. today's political landscape, the wars that are happening in both Israel and Ukraine. It, it gives me a different uh, outlook on all of it. Yep, yep. I don't walk with fear in that sense. Right. Yeah. My favorite verse on joy is in Psalm 16. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> In your presence is fullness of joy. Mm. So I find that if I'm on any given day feeling, you know, down in the dumps, it's yeah. like, okay, that means I'm not enough in God's presence. In his presence, yeah. Because he is joy. He is all those things. So in his presence, you get the full, complete character of joy. Right. Yeah. Right. And, right. and it is... And his perspective and all of that. Yes. Yeah. And I, and it is part of, as the famous verse says, part of our fruit of the Spirit. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not one of because it's a singular fruit that has these parts to it. Um, but part of that is that we are people of joy. Mm-hmm. And it, these are growing carrots. So I like the, the idea that it's fruit. Fruit has to blossom. It has to then change and transform. And then it has to grow and ripen until it's ready to be picked. Until mm-hmm. it's fully ready. And I think... That fully ready time is when we're with the Lord. In due season. In due season. And so these are all parts of, of us that are growing. A joy is something that is that is different, uh, I think. And I, I like that we focus on it every year because the centrality of Christ becoming human is so different. Uh, and the centrality, and not the centrality, but the, the main idea that this Christ, who is our God, who is human, didn't ask us to suffer for salvation. Didn't ask us to get it right for sin. He suffered for us. And you don't find that anywhere else in, in, a, in other people who have different religions or faith. Like That the one that we worship is also the one that suffered for us. Mm-hmm. Um, which means I can worship him even more fully because if I'm feeling bad that day, it doesn't decrease my joy. It doesn't decrease how he looks at me. It doesn't decrease my ability to be saved. Sure. It's just I'm already there because I trust what he's done. And so that gives you that underlying joy uh, in the middle of times of, of grief, 
of mourning mm -hmm. and other times. Yeah. It's like the peace that passes understanding. It's yeah. also the joy that passes yeah, understanding. Yeah, it is. It's like, where did that come from? Well, I I know my creator and I know what he has done. And, and I it changes my perspective on that. Yeah. So the other theme that we look at um, on the last week of Advent this year, typically people use the theme of love. But this year we changed from love to adoration. Um, part of it was just originally, to be honest, just a whim. There wasn't a beginning spiritual move to like do that. But the more <laughs> I've looked at it, I wish I could say it was. Well, you know. then just say that and the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit did this, you. prompted me to kind of, let, let's look at these other ones. And adoration was one of them. Mm -hmm. And I love that adoration and love are similar, but they're not the same. Yeah. You know, when we talk about love, we talk about the, the love of God, what he has done, that coming down from heaven. But adoration is different, you know. Adoration, I think, is a reminder of how we are towards him. Uh, you know, yeah. in scripture, especially in the Christmas stories that you read, or in the not fully correct biblical Christmas stories that we have, you know, there you have your manger scene. And the manger scene has more things that would have happened in, in one scene that actually did happen in one scene. But, you know, you have animals and they're bowing down. You have the shepherds and they're bowing down. You have the wise men and they're bowing down. They weren't all there at the same time. Right. But it, it gives us this picture of what adoration is. It's the Reader's Digest Condensed Version. It is. It is the Reader's <laughs> Digest Condensed Version. But it helps us. It you does. know, adoration is that we are expressing our, our love by humbling ourselves before the one that needs to be loved. Or not needs to be that that should be loved, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. of what he's done. And we do that not just as he comes as a child, but for all that he has done. And we look look forward to what, what comes. It's kind of an um, old fashioned word, isn't it? It is. You don't hear it very no. often. No. That you not that adore we don't do something. It. You think something might be adorable, but we usually say a puppy's adorable. Yes. And I think a case could be made that people adore football games. Yeah. Although we don't say it. We don't way. say it. <laughs> it is a different way to do it, you know, but if you think about whether it's a football game or a puppy and it's, it's adorable or something, what, what, what it means is you are expressing your love for it. You're yeah, it's a puppy. You're grabbing it. You're petting it. You're playing all this time. With the game, you're shouting and you're yelling, but you're, you're doing it to the, you're expressing your love to the thing. Mm -hmm. but that's what adoration is. You know, when we read in Luke that the shepherds went, they went and they, they adored, they stood and wondered at this, and they soaked it all in and, and spoke words at whatever they could. That must have been amazing. It had to have been amazing. I mean, you had an experience with angelic beings that scared you to your very bones and then brought joy out of you like you've never known before, and you had to go figure out. That's why they said, let's go figure this out. Let's go to this. This child must mean something. I don't think they knew it was the Messiah. Maybe they had an inkling because of the angels, but... How well versed they were in all that, I don't know. Right. But but they were willing to travel, what, 500 miles? Well, the shepherds, I don't know how well, far they the went. Oh, not the shepherds. No, I was thinking wise men. The wise men, a different type of adoration. They see a heavenly, the heavenly you know, stars move, and they, they read that, and they go, and, they're, and they tried, yeah, hundreds of miles coming across. Who knows when they arrived. It's sometime in the first couple years mm -hmm. of, of the birth of Jesus. And they adored him. It says that they adored him by presenting him gifts. You know, you do that when you have a puppy. Here's a little toy for you. Here's this for you. Here's a, and you, you're showering them with, with love, or, with adoration, yeah. with words of praise, uh, with uh, touches, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that's what they're doing because they recognize something in this child that we are showering with him. And they, it was lavish gifts they brought him. Yes. Gold and frankincense and myrrh, you know, and... and and how it could help him on his journey. And and that's very different that mm -hmm. they would do that when he is taken to the temple, you know, and, and Simeon is there and, and he adores him and praises who he is. And so the idea of adoration is an idea that, that's been, like I said, started as a whim, but really over this Advent season, especially as I'm preparing the final Advent sermon, as we'll get to it, we'll, we'll, um, we'll kind of draw out this idea of how do we adore our God? Not just at Christmas time. Part of it is, yeah, we should, we give gifts to each other. That's one way. But like, how do we adore Christ in this? Mm -hmm. How do we adore Christ on January when I go back to work? 
How do we make it a mindset? How do we make it a mindset of adoration? Yep. And understanding that adoration is ex- that expressing of the joy, the for the other themes we have uh, at other times, the joy, the faith, the hope, the love, the expressing of that towards God. Mm-hmm. I, I know people will say, well, I do that on Sunday morning, or in our church we have Saturday night and Sunday morning. I do that at the church service. You might express it during singing time. But is that adoration is, is more than just one time here. It's more than just praise, is what I it hear is. you saying. Yeah, it, it's gifts. It's giving back to. It's it's. I mean, if you see it, what was brought to him from the, the wise men, they're, they give lavishly. So I ask myself, how am I giving lavishly to God? Mm-hmm. And if I'm blessed in this way, I, I would give lavishly in my finances. If I'm blessed, uh, maybe not with finances, but I have some extra time on my hand, I give lavishly of my time or my talent, uh, of my thoughts and, and how I help. Um, whether you're at our church or another, part of that is just getting yourself physically involved in the body, uh, involved in whether it's greeting or youth groups or outreach and being involved uh, is a way of giving back, mm-hmm. um, of adoring him. And, and I think that's important. Words matter too. what you say. You know, we see that people said words to right. who he was and they yep. adored him for who he was. Um, so maybe you don't have to share it with any. Maybe it's something you write down in a journal. Mm-hmm. I love you for I adore you for these things. Um, kind of like the thankfulness we talked about, and they can be connected. Yep. Um, but the things that you do throughout the week, you, know, you sit down maybe middle of the week Wednesday. You know? So how is adoration different from love? I, I think love, especially in the, these themes, love is what is expressed towards us in, in a general feeling. And adoration is how we respond to that love. Oh, okay. I respond by expressing my love to something else. It's not about me. Yep. I mean, the part about me is that I recognize this, but I, I, I'm adoring something else. God loves us. We adore him. And we adore him. Yeah. Yeah. And part of that adoration is we try and love him back. Yes. However imperfectly we do it. But we, I think adoring is different. Mm-hmm. And it is, it's, there's a, a humbleness to it. Mm-hmm. There's a recognition. The wise men recognize this great king that even the stars told him about. There's yeah. a recognition of who he is. Mm-hmm. Um, you can't adore until you see the greatness of what that is. You know? Until you see the worth. Yeah, the worth. I think that's a, a good way to put it. And so I, w- I would kind of put those together. Mm, okay. And and say, what do we do this season? As we're coming into near the end of Christmas, we're about halfway through here, uh, you're going to adore your family. You're going to give them gifts. Mm-hmm. You may make gifts and bake things and do stuff and whatever you do in the traditions that we talked about before, but how are you going to adore Christ? How do you adore him with your neighbors? You know, and that could be just expressing that you love Christ and maybe they could come with you to a service. Mm -hmm. Uh, Come hear about this Christ. Maybe your neighbors don't know him. You adore him by being able to express love by speaking of him. If you adore your football team or your puppy you don't keep it to yourself right you oh wait till i show wait you wait till picture. i show you this let me get you to this and why don't you like that's <coughs> and you're expressing what is so important to you uh and an adoration of god adoration of christ and his coming and his second coming as he returns is expressing to other people look at, look at what he's done yeah do you know him just come and check it out or come to my bible study come you don't have to know anything about it, but it's it's just so much on your tongue, not a tongue lashing of people because they're sinful, but right. a, a tongue praising of the one who's rescued you. I think they're very different. Oh yes, let me tell you my story. This is my story. It's what God has done for me. It's where I'm at, and I'm so lucky. I used to be the now I'm the, the transformations, the different things, and you're sharing all of this. You're adoring, mm-hmm. you know, and I think a lot of times we stop just short of the adoration. Well, you know, well, I go to church or I have faith, but, but we don't take the next step to begin to adore God before others in public. We'll do it with the dog. We'll do it with the football or soccer team, whatever teams you have right now. Those aren't controversial. They're well, not sometimes controversial. Sometimes football is, but. So, some people will do it with their politicians, mm-hmm. you know, but yeah, it's, it's, that's where it is. So hopefully in this Advent and Christmas season, you can take some of these themes 
and move forward with them as well. We're going to take a break after this. We'll be back in the new year. Um, we have one in the new year. We'll start off talking about a little bit about goal making and what we do and start that off. But then we're going to start what we call our all church book read. And uh, it's a book that we're going to go through chapter by chapter called The Political Gospel. And we'll post that, uh, a link to that in the description. So if you want to get it, if you're not part of our church, but you want to get it and follow along with us, you're welcome to do that. And starting the second week in January, I think, we'll start with the introduction and we'll start just walking through it uh, as we unfold this wonderfully uh, powerful book about the gospel and politics and what the, the true essence is. Um, it's not about which side you're on. It's, it's not like, about Democrats and Republicans. It's not about Democrats worried. and Republicans. It really is about the gospel and how we can utilize this time period of politics and chaos and all that and really uh, promote the gospel. Because that's what's most important, to at least to me uh, and I know to you. And so join us uh, in, the, in the new year with that. Until then, I hope you have a wonderful Christmas. Uh, we've a enjoyed this for Christmas. A joyful <laughs> Christmas, uh, and that you remember, you know, the, that what God has promised. You remember His prophecies. Uh, you sit in His joy, and that you would spend time throughout the rest of the season adoring Him uh, for all that He's worth. So until next year, see you later. Take care.